McDonald's is a last name. Abercrombie and Fitch, last names. Armani is a last name. Baskin Robbins is a last name. Chrysler is a last name. Fisher Price, Gucci, Hennessy, Harley Davidson, Hilton, Honda, Coles, Kraft Foods, Lowe's Movie Theater, Marriott is a last name. Maybach is a last name. Nordstrom is a last name. Pillsbury is a last name. Porsche is a last name. Procter and Gamble, two last names. Rolls Royce, Charles Rolls, Henry Royce, last names. Turner Broadcast System, Ted Turner, last name. Versace, last name. Wells Fargo, Henry Wells, William Fargo, last name. Walgreens, last name. Wrigley's, last name. Welch's Grape Juice, last name. Here you are, you think you're buying a product. You are not buying a product, you're buying a name. You think you're wearing a product. Hey, look at this product. No, you're saying, look at this family. And what you don't know is while you're making every family rich, you're making yourself broke. So you don't went to one family called Wells Fargo and got $200,000 so you can go to another family called Rolls Royce so you can get them money and get yourself a car so you can go back to the hood and see the Joneses and say, look at what I, what I got. Meanwhile, Wells Fargo, their family sitting up being rich and Harley Davidson's and Rolls Royce are being rich and the Joneses are sitting there holding up people's stuff saying, look at what we did and we broke. What if I told you that your blessing is attached to your name? That part of the reason why you're not wealthy yet is because you keep trying to make Yolanda wealthy. You keep trying to make Tasha wealthy. What if you made Johnson's wealthy? What if you started thinking about your kids? What if you started thinking about your legacy? What if God started dropping Canaan and opening up windows of heaven? Because now you're not just thinking about you. You're thinking kingdom. There are some people who are attached to you who say, Mama, can you do something with this name? There, there, there's some people who are saying, Dad, can you do something with this name? Maybe God gave you the name to change and reverse some of the stuff that the name meant one day. I wish there was somebody in this room that said, My name might mean one thing right now, but I promise after today, this name will get ready to change. I promise after today, everybody's going to want my last name. I'm here to let you know you are a curse breaker. You're thinking kingdom. You are not just getting married, you're breaking the curse. You are not just graduating from college, you're breaking the curse. You are not just getting out of high school, you're breaking the curse. You are not just saying, you're breaking the curse. And everybody around you is about to be blessed because of what God's getting ready to do in your life. I don't know what my name meant before I got here, but I know it's going to be before I leave. You got a legacy. Power in your name. You've heard this a million times. That the cemetery is full of potential. And it's true. Because that person didn't do what they needed to do through the dash. Dealing with agony and anger and anxiousness and you are ashamed. If you want your future, you gotta heal. You keep trying to win and you're wounded because you have not confronted the dysfunction, the embarrassment, the emptiness, the insecurity, the jealousy, the laziness, the loneliness. One of your superpowers is a made of mind. One that is fully persuaded to get it done every single day, no matter the task. I know it's gonna be hard. I know it's gonna be up. I know it's gonna be down. So you gotta rise up. You gotta stay committed because a shark never stops moving or it dies. I need you to become the CEO of you. Yes, fear is gonna come. Yes, challenges are gonna come. Yes, you're gonna feel that you can't carry on. But you must continue to rise. You must continue to have faith. You must grow those wings and you must soar above and beyond the heavens. You must continue to rise. We need you to be a light in the midst of darkness. This world has gone crazy. This world needs you to rise up. This world needs your dream. This world needs you to achieve everything you got on the inside of you. This world needs you to be you. But in order for you to be you, we got to have you to rise up. I will be resilient. I will rewire my thinking. I will emerge. I will evolve. I will be immune to impossibility. I will be immune to the pain that is attached to my purpose. I will not be stagnant. I will not stay stuck in the mud that you left me in. I will evolve. I will rise. 
when others think that you can't carry on, rise away from the excuses. Rise away from the substitutions. You left me for dead. You bury my face into the ground. Did you think I would stay there? I was what? This is for my future. This is for my children. This is for my destiny. This is for my legacy. There is no pain that is bigger than my purpose. I will rise. And don't quit on yourself. Keep believing. Keep going up. I will rise. Self-love is the cure to self-hate. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself. Self-love is the cure to feeling depleted, feeling like you have nothing left, you have no energy. Self-discipline is self-love. Your journey will have unexpected stops. It will have curves. It will have hills. It will have valleys. You will have sunny days. You will have rainy days. But you have to decide. If I encounter rejection, if I encounter frustration, I will not give up. You will find the calm, the peace, the hope, the faith, the courage, the expectancy you need to live. If you never get married, you are not. If you never pass that law degree, you are not. If you never become a doctor, you are not. If you never get married, you are not. If you never have a child, you are not like you are. And that's why God created you. You are not. The first thing you got to realize is that you got to love yourself. It's about self-love. Start understanding that if you're going to do something with your life, you got to fall in love with yourself again. The moment you start talking about self-love, you start seeing, you turn that lens inward, and you start coming in contact with your personal emotional history. Right? You start, if I really love myself, how can I live a better life? It is time to be more selfish, where it's all about you and taking care of you. There are key components and key ingredients in the recipe of a student mentality. Number one, you need to be disciplined. The future is very expensive, and only those who are carriers of discipline can inherit the future. I need you to stay motivated. I don't care if you have to listen to me a thousand times, I need you to stay motivated. And I need that motivation to mature into discipline. I need you to be self-aware. So I need you to remember that you are always learning. In life, you are always learning. And I need you to believe in yourself. I need you to see yourself capable, lovable, and unconditionally worthy of your future. Turn your pain into progress. I need you to see yourself. See yourself. One of the things that many students lack is vision. You got to see yourself before you get there. You have to hear yourself telling yourself thank you. I need you to open up your ears. Open up your ears. Because the you from the future is telling you thank you. Thank you for not giving up when you wanted to give up. Thank you for not being depressed. Thank you for not allowing the brokenness to eat your progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got this. It's going to get hard sometimes. I'm telling you right now. It's not going to be easy. But it's worth it. Maybe you're listening to me right now. You want to lose weight or you, you're trying to pass the final exam. Or maybe there's just this feat that seems as though it is impossible. Turn your pain into progress. Turn your pain into progress. I need you to be uncomfortable with average. I need you to be allergic to average. I need you to come to the end of yourself. So many people are depending on you. A student is hardworking. A student is mentally tough. Have the ability to adapt. Have a character. Consistency. Demonstrate courage on the daily. Stay motivated. Stay positive. Earn your respect. Have a winning attitude, breathe, compete, make no excuses, set goals, practice great habits, stay focused. You want your future? You gotta outwork everybody on that field. You gotta outwork everybody in the room. You gotta learn how to perform under pressure. You gotta leave it all out on the field. <laughs> everybody want the future, but everybody wants to be average. 
I've heard it all in my career. All the bullshit excuses and the lies people tell themselves. They say things like, I'll start Monday. It's not my fault. It's not fair. I'm too damn tired. Or my personal favorite, I don't have enough time. Let's have a real talk. You know what kind of people do and say these things? Losers. They have a loser mentality through and through. And until they recognize that the problem is them, they'll never improve. Until they develop a winner's mentality, they'll never get what they truly want. What's a winner's mentality, you ask? It means being focused on yourself and not other people. It means having desire. It means wanting it. Willingness to work for it. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. You need to shut down all negativity and frankly not give a shit what others say and think. You want to know what the 10 most dangerous words in the English language are? What will other people say? And what will other people think? You're the only person who needs to be okay with how you live your life. You could be hated by everyone. If you're okay with your actions and behavior, you'll be content. At the same time, you could be loved and adored by every damn person on the planet. But if you're not okay with how you've lived your life, you'll go to bed with emptiness. The losers we discussed earlier, there'll never be a shortage of them. People who throw hate your way because of how you live your life. And there'll never be a shortage of people who want to see you fail. So the key is to just do you. Do what makes you happy and do what you think is right. At the end of the day, if you and you alone can look yourself in the mirror and be content with the choices you made, then that's all that matters. Believe in everything that you are and understand within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. Have faith in your abilities. Work hard, never give up, and there's nothing you can't accomplish. With the right amount of confidence, anything is possible. No matter what you set out to do, your first word should always be, I believe in me. The most important person to believe in is always yourself. When you feel like throwing in the towel, when you feel like surrendering everything you work for, remember why you started. Remember how you felt when you started. You were hungry. When you want to let go, when you want to surrender, when you want to stop, when you're ready to quit, when you have failed and failed again. Let me remind you what got you here. Hunger got you here. A strong desire got you here. You were desperate to break curses in your family. You were desperate to break the cycle of poverty and depression. You were desperate. Hunger got you here. Remember this. Every dream requires discipline. Every dream requires discipline. You can travel the world and study students and their behaviors and their mindsets. There is a science behind achievement. And when you study the most successful students in the world, we find that they are responsible, they are motivated, they are self-managed, they are self-aware. They have a long-lasting student mentality even after they have passed the test. Because they understand that life is a test. And in life, there are ups and there are downs. And so accept the responsibility. See yourself as primarily responsible for your outcomes and your experiences. You are going to need discipline. Motivation will help you get started. But discipline is going to keep you on the road to your destiny. You got to be self-motivated. You got to find purpose in what you do by discovering personally meaningful goals and dreams. If you're going to be a successful student, if you're going to come out on top, you've got to start managing your time. You plan and you take action in pursuit of your goals and dreams. So let me tell you something, everybody has a dream, but there is a behavior that must follow your belief system. Remember this, behavior follows belief. If you have not been able to change your behavior to match your dream, then you need to go back and examine your belief. Because 10 times out of 10, if you can't change your behavior to match your dream, then you don't believe. When somebody believes, everything changes the time is coming where you are going to feel like giving up but you're going to have to remember why you started you got to dig deep and learn how to create possibilities for yourself when nobody gives you an opportunity 
You have to turn your mess into your message. The facts. Fear and discomfort all promote growth. The more often you willingly place yourself in the uncomfortable, the more you'll find moments of progress, moments of growth. You'll get better, stronger, and more confident. When this becomes a habit, the tough situations in the future, when faced with something bigger, the courage and strength you've built, the stronger person you've become, now prepares you to get through and come out the other side. Your growth is in the gap, from where you are now to where you want to be. It's what's inside this gap, the walls, barriers, fears, and the uncomfortable that you need to go through. This is what's going to grow you into the person you were born to be. At times when others would normally crumble, you'll rise up. At times when others steer away, you'll straighten the wheel. You'll have complete conviction. You can take on what's in front of you. Understand, this is the way for massive personal growth, realizing your ultimate dreams and becoming the strongest, best version of yourself. It's having trust and faith, knowing everything is awaiting you on the other side, knowing you've willingly placed yourself in these moments. Ask yourself, when was the last time I stepped into the uncomfortable, stepped out of my comfort zone? Are you still getting frustrated that your dreams are taking longer than expected? If you're not pushing and challenging yourself, how will you ever get to where you want to be? Many people just see the upsides of a goal. Many people just see the upsides of a dream, of a vision. They don't accept the struggle, the walls, barriers, and fears they need to go through. You have to accept the downside. You have to accept the struggle. You have to accept the uncomfortable. I remember five years ago, I used to tell myself that I was flat out, that I was working as hard as possible. I look back at the me five years ago and laugh at what that guy used to do. It was pathetic, but at that time, I thought I was doing everything I could. You have to push yourself past the edge of your comfort zone. It's the only way to grow. It's having a balanced perspective on the highs and lows of realizing a dream in order for you to get to where you want to be, for you to close that gap. It can't all be red roses. You need to get uncomfortable. It's not going to be handed to you. And if it were, you wouldn't have the strength, confidence, and ability to handle it. Being handed a dream or working for it is two different types of people. Which one are you? You are battered, broken, and depleted. Some of you have been abandoned. Your greatest opponent is an enemy you cannot see. But you can feel, you can feel that abandonment. A legacy is something that is passed down. It is your mark. It is your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution to the world. Your legacy is something that is passed down. It is your mark. It is your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution to the world. I, I don't care about legacy. I'm single. I don't care about legacy. I don't have no kids. I don't care about legacy. My family never cared about me. I don't care about them. I, I, my life is my own. I don't. Why do I need to even think about legacy? Well, here's the thing I have to say to you. The thing you need to know is this. You are leaving a legacy whether you want to or not. Everybody in this room is going to leave a legacy. The question is, are you going to be intentional about the legacy you're leaving? Are you actually going to be intentional or are you just going to let anything be passed down, anything be given to others on your behalf? Don't let it be so. It's like this weekend, this past weekend, I went out to go preach. And when I went to go preach, I went into a city and I rented a car. And I rented a car. When I went to the uh, rental car, they said, go down, go downstairs to the garage. You can grab any car. When I went down there, there were only two cars. There was one car that looked like it wouldn't make it past Monday. And then there was another car. So I went to this car. But when I got into the car, the car smelled like cigarette smoke. And, and so I, I took off with the car because, you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, let me get out of here. And so I'm driving the car for a couple of days. When I bring the car back, drop off the keys, they say, hey, you have any problems the car, said no problem with the car. They said, all right, cool. I leave and uh, they said, they, I, I looked on, on my email and they billed me $350. How you gonna charge me? I've never smoked a day in my life. 
They said, sorry, sir, you brought the car back to my life cigarette. I said, no, I didn't bring the car back to my life cigarette. Y'all brought me a car that smelled like cigarettes. They said, no, all we know is that you brought us a car with cigarettes, so you have to pay the price. Can I tell you something? That is a picture of many of our lives. Some of us live a life that stunk so bad. And many of you are paying a price for a life that you didn't live, but somebody lived before you, and they handed you down a name or a life that stunk so bad that now you got to pay forever for it. And I'm here to let you know, stop giving people this dirty, nasty, stinky life. Why don't you build a legacy so when somebody gets into the car of your life, they want to say thank you instead of, I can't believe what you did to me. Everybody here has struggled with an addiction that's not yours. It was an addiction that your family didn't deal with. It was an addiction that your father just overlooked. And so it got passed down to you. And now you're struggling with this addiction. But truthfully, if you track the addiction, your father had it. And your grandfather had it. And your great-grandmother had it. And your whole family had it. And because they didn't deal with it, because they weren't thinking legacy, now you're driving in a car that you got to pay for. And God is saying, the buck stops here. That, that this is it. I put you in the earth because you're about to stop some stuff. I know people who went to go buy a house, and when they went to go buy a house, they saw their credit report, and the credit score was so jacked up, and when they saw the report, they realized that mama had gave out their social security number to the whole family, and everybody done rented stuff and didn't pay back, and everybody had electric bills and cell phones that don't even exist no more. Why? Because somebody didn't care about legacy, and they handed you a bill, and now you can't walk in Canaan, not because of your issues, but because of some issues that were passed down. God forbid you are sitting in this place saying, I don't care about legacy. You need to care about it. Because somebody's got to live in the life you have. You are passing something down whether you want to or not. Why are you the only one who knows how to make that apple pie everybody love? Why, why are you the only one who knows how? So you mean to tell me, can't nobody else make that sweet potato pie recipe but you? So, so you're going to just die and you're not going to tell nobody what the secret was. Even Colonel Sanders left his secret. Now, come on now. Even Colonel Sanders said, y'all make some good chicken, but when I'm gone, y'all gonna keep making it. What I'm saying to you is, why is it that you're the only one, so you own all this real estate, and you didn't share that with nobody? You're not gonna tell nobody how to do that? You're the only successful marriage in your family. You're not gonna tell nobody. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hoard this information so you can be the only one who wins. You have lost. You have lost. You have lost. And I'm telling you that you are going to have to look at your life and recognize that everything you are doing right now is having major and great impact. If you're going to leave a legacy, you're going to have to remember how you started, but focus on how you finish. I don't want you to forget how you started. I don't want you to forget that father wasn't there. I don't want you to forget some of the conditions that you were raised in. I don't want you to forget some of the rejection, some of the pain. No, nope, I absolutely, I want you to remember how you started, but do not for one second let it dictate how you're going to finish. There's somebody in this room saying, Pastor, I don't understand. I, I hear you, but, but this sermon got me all messed up. I came, I, I was feeling good. And then you done preached this sermon, and now I'm thinking about the 60 years of my life I've wasted. I'm thinking about the 60 years of hurt I caused. I'm thinking about the 60 years of stuff I did. I got some college student who's sitting here saying, Pastor, I wish I heard this word in my junior year in high school. I wish I heard this word in my sophomore year in high school. Because I did some stuff as a sophomore that I'm still paying for now. I did some stuff as a senior that I'm still paying for now. Can I tell you something? Your yesterday may have been jacked up, but God knows how to take the old and make it new. I came to preach to somebody today and let you know your first 60 years was jacked up with your next 60 days God says I will turn it into such impact I will give it such greatness that you won't even remember some of the stuff that you jacked up legacy is built now but experienced later if you are going to leave a legacy you got to start building now I'm talking to college students okay don't don't wait oh when I graduate in four years I'm just gonna live it up ah! And then when I graduate, when I graduate, I'm going to be free. I'm going to get serious about my life. Can I tell you something? I know 40-year-olds who are living under the consequence of things they did from 18 to 22. And they thought that when they left school, that they left the issue, not realizing that the issue followed them all the way into their adulthood. I'm telling you that right now you are a builder. Right now, you have to start building your life now. You got to start building credit now. You got to start building your finances now. You got to think like a farmer. A farmer thinks sowing. I'm sowing seeds, realizing that I'm not going to reap this until later. Your last name is bigger than your first name. I don't care how you got your name. Woods, pretty face, but I'm not for hitting too. Yeah.
break room. Got him like, mm-hmm, I'm too, too good to the yard. He ain't never leave this pretty, pretty on God. Bro, mm-hmm, I'm too, too good. Real boss, keep me forgot who.